What if we could take our regular 3D prints, treat them to make them interact with touchscreens, to take tabletop gaming to a new level? That's what we're going to explore today with the Cap Wars Print and Play project. One of the greatest joys of running this channel is being able to try out and showcase creative projects from the community. You might remember recently a video on a free multicolored 3D printing system using printed parts and software to create a Sharpie tool changer. The creator of that project, Andreas, known as Psycht84, sent me a new video of his latest project. In it, we see small printed parts placed onto a tablet screen, and then the tablet and pieces interacting as the game plays out, complete with animations. I don't know about you, but I've never seen anything like this before, and I thought it was awesome and just had to have a go myself. In this video, I'll take you through everything you need to know, so you can try it too. To play Cap Wars, all you need to do is to visit the GitHub, which is linked in the description, and on it you'll find a link to the video I showed earlier, and all of the instructions you need to set up the game. To launch it in any device, we simply click Start Game. This will work on your computer, but obviously it's designed to be used on a tablet. And to do so, we simply launch the game as we just saw. On iOS and Android devices, we can come to the browser menu and add it to the home screen. This will not only give you a shortcut that makes it easy to access the game in future, but once you do so, it will load it in full screen without any of the browser interface. Obviously to play the game, we need to print out some files, and we come to the STL files folder on GitHub, where all of the files needed are available for download. Six of the parts are those that we use in the game, and therefore we need two sets, and then the holder A and B we only need a single set of. Andreas designed these pieces to be used on a 10 inch screen, but my tablet is only 8 inches. With the STLs loaded up, I noticed that the diameter of the base for each piece was 16mm. So I used my calipers over the screen and determined 14mm would be a good size for my tablet. Then it was a simple matter of scaling down one of the pieces to 14mm, which gave me a scale factor of 87.5%, which I then applied to the rest of the pieces to get them all to match. In terms of printer settings, all you need to do is have a layer height of 0.1mm and make sure support is turned off. On most printers with these settings, the 12 play pieces are going to take between an hour and a half and two hours to complete. A bonus in making this project is that you require very little filament. There's a fair chance that these very small parts will have some minor blemishes that need cleaning up. For me, that only took a couple of minutes using a combination of flush cutters and a pick or tweezers to remove some loose extrusions. Overall, they print quite cleanly. For the two storage pieces, I scaled these down to 90% to create extra room for any coatings I applied, and I printed these in metallic PLA with a layer height of 0.15mm. Assuming your slicer profile is accurate enough, you should be able to screw the two halves together to make a nice storage container for the pieces. In case you hadn't worked it out, regular printed parts will not interact with the touchscreen of your phone or tablet. However, a metal part such as a bolt will do so if you press lightly. Therefore, the key is to make any parts you print electrically conductive. After his own extensive testing, Andreas found a coating that did this job well, and instructions for how to use it are contained in the video and on the GitHub. If you're in Europe, this will work perfectly for you too, but for me being in Australia, I couldn't find anywhere that sold it that would deliver down under. Therefore, I had to conduct my own extensive testing to find an equivalent product. Of everything here, four of them worked, but only two are really worth your time. The common ingredient in most of these is graphite, and with that come some significant safety warnings. You do not want these products on your eyes, skin or lungs, and if you swallow it, it can be fatal. So please keep these out of reach of children, use gloves and goggles when necessary, and if you don't have access to a well-ventilated area, use respiratory protection. So on to my testing. I printed many copies of this game and I had seven different products and processes to try. Let me run you through what actually works and what is a waste of your time. First up is conductive filament and all I should have to do is print it and then paint a color. I've actually made a video on this in the past. It prints just like ABS and yes, it is electrically conductive, but I found when I was making circuits that it had a significant voltage drop because the resistance was just too high. In the end, I did get a 3D printed circuit working, but I didn't actually use this filament. 
Nevertheless, this is a completely different application, and lo and behold, printing in this conductive filament worked without any alterations. So I printed two full sets, and attached them with tape to the back of some spare foam, before giving them a single light coat with metallic spray paint, as described in the instructions. After letting the paint dry, I retested on the tablet, and found that the paint had not hindered the conductivity. So job done, right? Well, not quite. X3D were running out the rest of their stock for conductive filament, with the 1.75mm version already sold out. So yes, this filament is conductive, and if you can get some, it's going to be the easiest solution, but let's assume that's going to be difficult and push forward. Next up is another straight filament, this time carbon fibre infused PLA. Actual carbon fibre is electrically conductive, so I hoped that this filament might be too, and I could simply print and then paint. Unfortunately what I found is that this filament isn't really conductive at all. I'm guessing because the carbon strands are chopped up rather than continuous as they go into the filament. Carbon filled filament definitely has its applications, but this isn't one of them. The rest of the products are coatings, and therefore my base parts are regular white PLA. This one's a bit unusual, but I was trying to think laterally. The product is brake de-squeak for your car. It's not written anywhere on the can, but on the website it says that this is made up of graphite and aluminium. My hope therefore was to spray on a coating, let it dry, and then coat with spray paint. As I started spraying on the de-squeak, things seemed pretty promising, as it left a uniform grey coating that looked like graphite. However, even after leaving it for some time to dry in the sun, it was clear that the coating was still wet, and therefore I would need to coat it in spray paint just to stop it from going everywhere. And the metallic spray paint seemed to do quite a good job of sealing the graphite inside, as it no longer went on my fingers. So I turned the pieces upside down to coat the bottom, and followed the same two-step application, a coat of de-squeak followed by a coat of spray paint. But it was not to be, as the masking tape was strong enough to rip the paint off the top of some of the parts, and worst of all, they didn't interact with the screen anyway. So the verdict on this one is it's not conductive, the coating never dries, and therefore it's not worth your time. This next one is included as a lesson on how you can be trapped when trying to find products with graphite. Lubricating products typically use graphite or PTFE, but often won't specify which. Lock lubricant is cheap and easy to get, and if it has graphite, we should just need to spray it on and then paint over the top. It was immediately obvious that this product used PTFE instead of graphite, as it came out as a clear liquid rather than grey. It took several days for the greasy feeling to disappear from the surface, but most importantly, the lock lubricant coated parts had no interaction with the screen. Conclusion, avoid any lubricating products that don't explicitly state they use graphite. One way to guarantee the presence of graphite is to use straight graphite powder mixed with spray paint. This was suggested by one of my patrons and was worth a try because it's cheap and easy to get. The plan was to apply spray paint, coat it in graphite while wet, and then seal it with further paint over the top. I'm using clear spray paint here just so we can see exactly what the graphite's doing, but it turns out that was never going to be hard because as much as I tried to puff it on neatly, I inevitably ended up blowing on big chunks and getting graphite powder everywhere. As planned, another thin layer of spray paint to try and seal the powder. After leaving it a while to dry, this seemed to have done the trick pretty well, so I flipped over all of the pieces to coat the other side, following the same process as before, including making an absolute mess when trying to puff on the graphite powder. I have no doubt someone more skillful could do a better job at this than me, but ultimately it's always going to be a pain. In terms of being conductive enough to interact with the tablet, this method actually worked quite well, but little pockets of powder were still going onto my finger, and more importantly, needed cleaning off the screen. My verdict on this one, if you've got no other choice it will be conductive, but damn it is it messy and wasteful. So how about something that's guaranteed to be conductive, in conductive shielding paint? This was another patron's suggestion, and it's the most expensive of everything tested. Traditionally, it's used to coat musical instruments to reduce static and hum. The process should therefore be simple, coated in this stuff and spray paint over the top. Despite the website saying non-toxic, the label on the can said the opposite. There were multiple safety warnings, including saying fatal if swallowed, so I didn't take any chances, gloved up, and inspected the paint. I decided because it was runny, I would take a pin, heat it up, and melt it into the underside of the PLA print. This would then allow me to dip it into the can, but I quickly found it was difficult to get an even coating. The paint didn't really stick to the PLA plastic like the spray paints had, 
and it liked to clump together in droplets in some areas. After letting it settle for a few minutes, I used a cotton tip to try and spread the paint around more evenly, before positioning the pieces on a wham bam slap mat to dry overnight. The next day, the paint was completely dry, but there were some marks where it had pulled and dried a little thicker, as well as other areas where it hadn't stuck well at all. It was, as you would hope, conductive, but that's where I ended my testing of this. It was too expensive, too hazardous, and too messy to be able to recommend. Honestly, at this point, I was getting pretty frustrated because I couldn't find an equivalent of what worked so well for Andreas. But then, I had a stroke of luck. I visited a shop to try and buy what looked to be a promising option, and I was informed that they didn't actually have it in stock. What they did have, however, was a rep from this company visiting at the same time as me. I explained the project in detail, and very confidently, this gentleman recommended me to the R31 spray. As we can see, it's labelled as graphite based. If we check the website, it also says that it dries to a solid film, which is exactly what we're after. Spray it on, let it dry, and then spray paint. So that's exactly what I did, spraying on an even coat on top, allowing some time to pass, after which I was relieved to find that it had dried, and that let me apply some metallic spray paint over the top. Once this paint had had time to dry, I then inverted the pieces and applied some graphite spray to the underside to finish them off. And I'm pleased to report that the result is perfect. The pieces are coloured and conductive. Short of starting with conductive filament, this is by far the next best option. So I had to do a lot of testing because I live down under, but I would like to avoid you having to do the same. So here's exactly what you're looking for in a suitable product. Firstly, if you're in Europe, hopefully you can use the link provided by Andreas to buy this spray. And if you're in Australia, hopefully you can track down the one that I found to be successful. So what are we looking for in potential other brands? Let me be clear in saying that I haven't used this, but it seems to tick all of the boxes. The keywords here are graphite and dry, and that it quickly dries tack free. Remember we're trying to avoid lubricants that use PTFE instead of graphite, and we're looking to avoid lubricants that stay wet rather than drying to a film. This one is available in the US and is only $8 a can. Again, to be clear, I haven't tested this product, but on paper, all of the descriptions seem to be exactly what we want. If you do give it a go, please report back in the comments section. To finish, I'd like to talk about why I'm so excited about this project and look at the bigger picture. Firstly, let me say how satisfying it was to play the game after successfully making the parts conductive. This game is quite simple, but it is really well executed, and I had a great game playing with my son, who enjoyed the novelty, particularly attacking my pieces, and seeing all of the animations. This game only needs to be simple, because really, it's a proof of concept. What I'm really excited about is seeing where the community takes this, especially considering printing tabletop miniatures is already a big part of 3D printing culture, so the way I see it, applying conductive coatings can only make 3D printing more versatile and popular. As a former teacher, I'm also excited by the prospects of students not only designing the CAD for the 3D parts, but also writing code for the game. I also wonder if software companies would try to stand out in a saturated market and design some games to take advantage of 3D printed parts. There's a lot of potential there, so time will tell. I'd like to add that with the holiday season approaching, a prep set of Cap Wars might make an excellent gift for someone, because they don't need a 3D printer, all they need is a tablet. Personally, I really love the creativity of this project, so hats off to Andreas for his work once again. I'm dying to know what you think of it, so let me know in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy interactive 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.